How's it going everybody? Just thought I'd come out here. It's a nice day. It was about 92 earlier. Now it's like probably about 78. I'm in the shade. Got Coca-Cola, not a sponsor. Aquafina, not a sponsor. So I brought this thing out. I've tuned it up. It plays pretty good. I got a really good deal on it, like I said. I think with shipping, everything was probably like about 35 bucks. And I was like, wow. I um, did one of these bases for somebody a while back. It was a glossy black finish. Went through it, went through all the electrical and everything. Got it all tuned up, adjusted the neck, filed the, the nut, did a bunch of stuff. Played really, really nice. So I saw this come up and I go, hey, that." That's a nice little base just to have around. If people come over, want to jam, just you know, stick it in their hands. If somebody wants to borrow it, for usually when people borrow stuff, it takes a long time for me to get it back. But I figured that was my original intention with this base, just kind of have a base that was kind of you know a nice sound and playable instrument. I wasn't going to abuse it or anything, but if something happened to it, I wouldn't be too worried about it. So I didn't put a lot of money into it. But every time I walk by this thing, I've played it like twice. I'm like, I'm not really feeling this blue. I'm, I, I want to do something about this blue really, really bad. I'm not feeling it. Nothing against the Dodgers. If you guys like this blue and blue is your favorite color, my apologies. But I've always been into kind of like old school stuff and, you know, hot rods and stuff. Not... Not necessarily like a motorhead, you know, into the engines and all that stuff. I know enough to keep me out of trouble and make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. But I always thought the finishes were so cool. All the custom paint jobs and the pinstriping and, and all that stuff. And I've I got some stuff to do some pinstriping and I'm terrible at it. So I'm not going to pinstripe this. But I wanted to do a really radical hot rod finish. And as I was thinking, I go, these pickups... Eh, they're kind of okay, but you know, what would I really like to put in here if I was going to really go all out and hot rod this thing again, hot rod finish and hot rodding the thing? What would I want to put in here? One of my favorite bases that I've played is what they call a Music Man bass. So, this came in the mail today, probably about an hour ago, from a company called Fleur. I've used their stuff before. They make really nice, inexpensive pickups. So I go, okay. Sometimes you gotta, I don't know how they get these in here. <laughs> it's a tight fit. So let me go unwrap this thing. You got your springs and everything right there. Some strong magnets, let me tell you, boy. Let me tell you. Anyways, let's open this up. You can kind of see what those look like. Let me lift this up. I had to get the right setting on my tripod to keep it from tipping over and stuff. So let me just go ahead and raise this up. That's a lot easier than rearranging it. See how those pickups look? They're nice. They're decent. They give you a P-Bay sound, which is a good sound. I've already got another base that does that. But I really wanted something with a little bit more, more volume, a little bit more punch. Oh, wow. So I got, <laughs> I got this. Look at that guy. <laughs> Look at next to those things. Things of behemoth. And it looks like... I just need to kind of widen the hole just a little bit. You know, I might actually, I'm thinking about putting a different pit guard on this thing. So I'm going to keep this pit guard for another project, but I am going to take this all down and get ready to refinish it. But that pickup, look at that guy. Look at the size of those magnets. Those are called pole pieces. Look at that. Compared to this 
Now the wind's starting to kick up. Every time I talk about painting, it gets real windy for some reason. It's the craziest thing. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn this around this way. I was gonna stand on the other side, but it's kind of hard. So loosen these. And the strings they put on here are garbage strings. There's no easier way to put it. When you get them, they look okay, but they have like a real light coating of rust. And you can feel they they just they just don't feel good. <laughs> They just don't feel good at all. Another thing too I'm thinking about doing is when I change the color on the body, I'm gonna change the color of this too. Because I think that would be pretty cool. I haven't done any setups or adjustments on that. I'll wait till the refinishing is done on it. Mm. So. I might make a two, two by four base actually. Maybe I'll save the strings for that. <laughs> Just some stupid thing. I make weird things sometimes, I know. Anyways, take this off. Just doing this to take the tension. I see people all the time take a pair of wire cutters and just snip the strings while they're under tension. That's really not a desirable thing to do. And puts a lot of, there we go, banging stuff again. Puts a lot of unnecessary tension on, on the neck, which we don't want. So, and speaking of the neck, yeah, I brought a backup water. Can never be too hydrated. It's better to be hydrated than dehydrated. You know what I mean? At least that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I was out today, I got screwdrivers, I decided to get some new screwdrivers, 99 cent store. For this, it'll do the job. You can get a lot of, and the reason I bought these is just to show you, you can get tools at the 99 cent store, just as well as Home Depot and anywhere else. Let's see, I got six screwdrivers for 99 cents. They're not craftsmen or anything to be doing any major stuff with. Got three flatheads and three Phillips. And the Phillips, <laughs> the Phillips look like they're all the same size. So let's go ahead and take the back of the, take the neck off this thing. And I know this would be faster if I was using a cordless screw gun, which I have one, but I know a lot of people don't. So I figured I might as well suffer through this just to show you that it is possible to do this without fancy tools. It's pretty, uh, Pretty exciting stuff, isn't it? <laughs> these screws, people don't realize how long these screws are. These screws are like super, super, super long. Oh, I'm getting carpal tunnel. Oh, my hands. My hands. Anyways, let's take this off. Look at the size of that screw. About as long as my thumb, not quite, but it's pretty long. And I actually got this box, not to put my tools in, which that's what I ended up being, but to put these parts in when I'm done. So I'll take this off. Probably would have been faster with the a screw gun, but anyways. If you want one like this, they have them on wish.com. They're not bad. I think normally they run like about 80 bucks. 
and Swiss shipping. And they're not going to be the best. This finish actually looks decent. Some of the other ones you might see a little tiny imperfection or the orange peel. That's where it has like a, if you hold it in the light just right, you can see a little bit of a texture. This one does. This one actually has like, like lines where they didn't like really put a, a good undercoating under it. You can see like imperfections in the paint. I'm not trying to be picky. I'm just saying this can always be improved upon. You don't want to drop your screwdriver like that. At least I dropped it on the metal plate rather than the finish of the guitar. But in this case, it doesn't matter because we're going to refinish it. Got all four screws in the bucket. Got your neck plate, and they put that on there to take up a little bit extra space. And flip it over. Ooh, the neck just comes right off. And usually you'll see this when you take your guitar apart. They'll put a piece of wood in there. It's a neck shim. Sometimes they're wood, sometimes they're cardboard. So there's the neck. It's a good looking neck. We'll take this other stuff stuff off there later, but we'll just put this off to the side. Okay, take off the strap button. These are pretty easy to take on and off. And if you play guitar, you'll notice it's usually this one here on the top that's usually wobbly. It's just, this one's wobbly because it's loose. But if you ever have a guitar where they get wobbly, usually they're missing the felts. Or this hole here gets augered out. And what you can do is you can put a toothpick in there with some white glue. Put the white glue in there, push toothpick down in the hole, let it sit for a little bit. You don't want to completely fill the hole, but you're just adding some wood there and then cut it real carefully with the razor blade right next to the hole and it'll give some extra wood for the screw to grab onto. Little trick of the trade. I act like I've done that before. It's because I have. The knobs just pull right off. Put those there. Usually these are yeah, like I thought. These are just finger tight. You can go after them with a, a wrench or a socket. If you have a deep socket to clear the part of the knob. The one's loose, the other one's not. Let's see if I remember the size. It's been a little while since I've done this. No, the, jack's, the jack is a 12. If you're wondering on so these import instruments, the nut on the jack is usually a 12 millimeter. And I th think the volume and tone pots, it's all shrink wrapped on there. There we go. Get those off. Keep those in the box. Your volume and your tone pot, they're usually either a 10 or an 11. Let's see if they're an 11. Okay. So I managed to bring a 12, a 13, and 11. All right, no problem. We'll just leave that one in place. We'll get to that later. Take the screws out. And what's handy, you know, I could have just taken this whole pit guard off with everything still on it, and just that probably would have been easier, but. Let's take the screws off. You gotta go slow with these, cause these are easy to strip out. I've stripped out a bunch of these. I just recently ordered some bags of replacement ones of these on some of my other guitars I gotta fix. So you're probably saying, 
Why are you messing with this guitar that was complete when you have other projects? And I will answer you, you with saying, that is a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I just saw this and it was kind of just like one of those things that said, you know, I should take this apart and make a video and then I'm going to refinish it and I'm going to really go through it and do some stuff to it and it's going to be going to be pretty cool. It'll be mine. Unless I decide to do it for a giveaway. I don't know. It's it's all brand new up in the air. I don't even know how long I've had this thing. Two months maybe? Maybe longer? I don't know. With the the whole shutdown of everything, the days seem to kind of blend together. I'm still working as an essential worker. So that's why I don't go live and stuff all the time. I don't have the luxury of time, but today, being a lazy Saturday afternoon, I figured, hey, I can do this. I know it's not my usual thing. People go, where's Elvis, you know? can only he's hard to watch imagine how hard it is to imitate him it's not something I want to do every day so I figured might as well mix things up a bit show that I can actually do something rather than make faces and talk weird and stuff a lot of times people go why are you talking with that accent like you're uh like your Arnold or something. It's like, yeah. I don't know. He's just kind of, kind of boring. His. I just thought it makes him makes him sound more interesting and as well as kind of foolish. Let's pull this up. There we go. There we go. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. And see, there's plenty of wood to take out under here. So, but these things are screwed down in here. I may have to take just a little bit of wood out for that other pickup because it is quite a bit bigger. Because it has a lot more sound trapped in it. So of course it's going to be bigger. And when they get in a hurry, they leave the polishing compound. Well, I'll just put a pick guard over it. Nobody will know. They just polish it and, you know, it's like, like a lot of these things, they're built to a price. So knowing that, I expected there was going to be a bit of work that needed to be done on it. Angry birds. Not the video game, but the real thing. He said it's a really nice day out. So figured might as well the neighbors are off doing whatever. The neighbors aren't like most of you guys are the neighbors are like almost in your back pocket and come on. I know sometimes if you just hold this and wiggle it ever so much you can kind of get it loose. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to bump the camera like that. Oh, I got that one on nice and snug. There we go. There we go. Just got to wiggle it. And then off it'll come. Pretty decent lock washer they used on there. Nice and thick. Auto adjust is auto focus isn't working today. I think it took today off for the since it's a Saturday. Let's put that over there. Normally I'd take the strings off the bridge. 
we'll just take the whole thing off as one. Take this off. I'm not taking these out yet because there's a, a ground wire that goes to the bridge. If you have a guitar, an electric guitar that's buzzing and you get little shocks <laughs> off it when uh, you're playing it's usually a ground thing usually it'll be real noisy especially if you're in a room with fluorescent lights there'll be a little bit of hum because the guitars do pick up all those noises and stuff but if it's like really loud and then you put your hands on the strings you touch the strings it goes away you lift it up it buzzes back it's almost always a ground issue. Almost always. So I was going to just snip the wire that goes through the body, but I am going to see if it's not just hanging out underneath the bridge. So if it's just hanging out underneath the bridge, I can slide it out through the cavity and keep the wiring harness all intact. Because so I'm going to change the pickups anyways um i've got a few ideas for this thing you know it's as i go i keep making changes and stuff with things i want to do that's kind of why it took so long for my motorcycle finally to get together because first it was going to be black and then it was going to be black and red and then it was going to be i don't know like a british racing green on the tank and the frame black and then the more I thought about it, I go, you know, I want to make it look like a, a speed twin, like the earlier Triumphs with a hard, rigid tail section on it, bigger tank, lower bars, make it look, make it look cooler than it would have looked with my original idea. I wasn't really into the chopper thing, I'm more into the bobber look which is just kind of more of a a streamlined stripped down let's get ready to race kind of look rather than the big old raked front ends and big old a painter type bars and stuff but, you know, no hate against that stuff i mean it's just it's just not my thing everybody has their own thing so Let me try a different screwdriver for that. I'm gonna try this other one here. Maybe this one will maybe this other one will work better. The screws over there. We are almost ready to sand. I'll do that for a different video. I'll do the sanding and prep. Yeah, that screwdriver's working a lot better there. Um, what I've heard a lot of guys when they paint the guitars, I, I usually just sand them and then, I don't know, it just, it does weird things with the paint. A couple of people have been saying lately on some of the online videos I've been watching, some of the guys that do really, really nice finish work on, on different things, they said to go ahead and sand it just to scuff up the this use this as a base coat, but just scuff it up with some 220 grit paper. And before you do that though, before and after, um, wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. Put some rubbing alcohol on a rag, wipe the whole thing down to get rid of any polishing compound or oils from your hands or anything. Cause you, cause what happens if, if it's on there and you start sanding, you just kind of cause those things to go into the wood. Oh, I caught a big one there, mate. 
Anyways, that is the bridge. We'll put this over here, like so. Get rid of that. And like I said, the wire, let me lift this up so you can see it better. That right there is the ground wire. And it's like that, and it makes contact with the bridge. The bridge is metal. So this is making contact with the metal. This grounds to the back of these pots, usually your tone pot. And that takes care of any grounding issues and keeping you from getting zapped. Because if your guitar isn't grounded, there is a chance you will get zapped. People have actually been killed from improperly grounded amplifiers and guitars and things working together like that. I was messing around playing with somebody one time and I was playing a guitar that wasn't grounded and I was just singing some backup and I got too close to the microphone and my lip hit the microphone. It was like I put a nine volt battery on my lip. <laughs> it was not pleasant at all. So I said, yeah, I think I need to uh, do some grounding with this guitar. And after I grounded it, it was, it was fine. It used to buzz a lot and I'm like, oh, it's just a cheap guitar or cheap pickups or whatever. But after I grounded it, all the buzzing went away. And it was like, wow. Who knew? Something so simple. Show this to you before I drop these parts here. You just have a Phillips screw that goes into this. They call this a strap button. Right there, and it's just flat. Then you've got a washer. This is plat. It's rubber, actually. Sometimes they're plastic, sometimes they're rubber. On the more expensive guitars, they're felt kind of cushions as they're screwed it in so it doesn't crack the paint. And this has a nice little recess in there. So the screw, when you put the screw in there, just sits down flush. I haven't decided yet. I might put um, strap locks on this thing. I've got strap locks on a lot of my guitars. And I've had guitars come off the strap before and I've caught them. I've never had one actually hit the ground because I'm pretty quick, but I just don't like the idea of having to think about that and be always prepared. So anyways, this is ready to get wiped down and sanded. And then I'll put a different pick guard on there. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Might actually put a metal have my son make a metal one for me because he's pretty skilled with metal working and stuff. And then I'm going to change the color of this to match the body with the new color. So I want to tell you guys what the new color is, but at the same time, I kind of want it to be a surprise. So while I'm, while I'm getting this one painted and ready to go, I'll get that taken care of. Then I'll start adjusting the, the neck I might put new tuners on this, or I might just oil these up. These aren't bad. Mm, yeah, they, they are. I'll put some better tuners on here. I don't know. I'm almost thinking about... Hmm. Again, like I said, I changed my mind a lot. Uh, the Music Man basses, they usually have three. They have three or four tuners. If it's a five-string, they have four on one side and one here. Or it'll have like three and then one. I'm not sure. Hmm, decisions, decisions. I might move this one here and then just round this over and then round that off. Hmm, I don't know. I might just leave it as is, or I might just kind of, I think I'll, I think I am going to shape this though because i don't really that looks kind of goofy i may shape this so it looks more rounded like a fender and but first things first we'll take care of the body get that all ready to go and go from there again where's my pickup at now i'm losing stuff man oh here it is See. I need to take off just a little bit of wood for it to fit in there. 
again, this cavity is going to be covered up with a pit guard anyway, so. But like I was saying, with the pole pieces, let me get this other pickup out of here. Okay, these ones here, as you can see, let me hold this up. There's quite a difference in size, isn't there? And on these, they're offset. So, you, so the idea is you have the string runs between each of these. So you have two poles, one on each side of the string. This one, the strings run over the top of the pole pieces. And you have two. This is actually two pickups in one. This is what they call a humbucker and it cancels out the, the buzz. And if I wanted a jazz bass sound, I could put a switch in there to split it. Wow. Decisions, decisions. There is a lot to decide what I want to do. Hmm. Anyways, this has been a long video. I appreciate you guys for sticking with me and watching this. Don't worry, there'll be more to come with this. And I'm sure you guys will really like what I did. I know there's going to be a few people that go, why'd you do that? But <laughs> you like that? Why'd you do that? But for the most part, I know most of the people will be, wow, that was a really cool thing to do. So I will leave this until next time. This is going to be a long project hopefully not too long but just taking the string tree off the nut anyways i will see you guys real soon bye, -bye.